I wanted a place for people to receive authentic guidance and practical ways to awaken. Thought-provoking, paradigm-shifting, and empowering. This is about expanding our human consciousness to create a wave of new possibilities. I'm Dr. Teresa willard White, and this is Quantum Minds TV. Welcome back to Quantum Minds TV, where we take a deep dive into various perspectives on what it's going to take to create a shift in human consciousness. In this episode, we're continuing the conversation with mentor, leader, and sovereign obsessiveness of the Modern Mystery School, Dave Lanyon, who bridges the worlds of hermetics, metaphysics, and spirituality with practical wisdom that can be universally applied to change people's lives. As an obsessiveness, I would say this to you. Do not outsource your discernment to anyone else in your life. Don't give it over to an organization, a government, a church, or anything else and say, this person will decide what I know and don't know what is true and what is not true. You need to do that for within yourself. Yeah, I, I certainly, I mean, you mentioned at the beginning my intelligent doubt, right? I came into this path with a lot of doubt, a lot of skepticism, especially, you know, being in immersed in my PhD studies in physics and were trained to be skeptical and to ask questions and to poke holes at theories. And, um, but as much as I had doubt and I wasn't sure what was going on, you know, when I was taking certain steps and, you know, I struggled with a lot of the concepts, I saw the results every single time in my life. And, and it was, and I knew I wasn't making it up because I wasn't necessarily, um, you know, it wasn't a psychological kind of participatory process for me. If anything, I was resisting it. But I, regardless of my resistance to, I saw the transformations. And yet I was a participating skeptic in the sense that I was willing to give it a try. I was willing to experiment with it and see if it reveals itself to me in my own life. And by the fruits or by the results directly that I kept getting, I knew that this is, this is good. And then my other, um, I mean, so my life became my proof. And then, you know, as much as I would ask the deeper questions, I also found that there was no bottom to the well of not just knowledge, but deep understanding. And, um, you know, that you can't make it up. <laughs> One person could not come up with all of that stuff. So I knew that there was such an accumulation of, knowledge, understanding, and wisdom that had been handed down, uh, you know, from generation to generation that was then being shared. And it's not just a book knowledge. It was a, a lived, practical, applied knowledge that this is how we do this. And it's not just about the what, it's the how. You know, one of the things that, that I, we often teach in the mystery school is that we're not a seminar company. We're not here to teach you about a subject, we're here to teach you the subject, how to live it, how to embody it. And, and that is not something you can get out of a book. That's something that really requires that immersive experience in person, you know, where we can work with each individual and be immersed in the energetic field and so forth. And so um, this, this combination of my own direct experience, me witnessing the results in other people as well, and then, you know, just knowing that that no matter in 20 years, no matter how far down that, you know, well of knowledge I've dug, it keeps going deeper. And, and the farther I go, the more I realize I'm still just scratching the surface here because there's so much more. And uh, so, you, you know, that that I think really speaks volumes to the fact that there really is lineage where so many other things I tried before it was it would just plateau. It, they'd hit a, a wall in terms of and being able to sufficiently answer questions in a satisfactory way, uh, whereas here I've never hit that within the modern mystery school. And, um, and there is, you know, th there might be points along the way where we think that there's contradictions, but as you keep on going and your consciousness and awareness expands, you get to this new level where you can look back and what looked like contradictions before, now you see it in a whole new context and the, those paradoxes are reconciled, so to speak, and it all becomes much more like multidimensional. Um, so this is one of the things that I think is, it makes the mystery school so relevant to today still, 
is that, you know, we say, well, these are ancient teachings. You know, what is their relevance to our modern world? But I think that, that they really help us access more of the, the wisdom that is universal. Um, and it's, it's, it doesn't really go away just because the trends are different. Uh, but also it helps us learn how to become more multidimensional and shift into a new paradigm uh, because it's so alchemical, so transformational. So why would you say that the Mystery School is relevant to today and why is it so needed uh, in the sense that we've opened our doors? Why is it so needed in our world today? Yeah, it, it's an interesting place because so so much of the world is focused on sort of your, your mental aspects. And we, we hear that a lot today. You know, you got to worry about your mental health, people getting triggered and safe spaces and, and uh, many other things. And of course, I think there is a huge amount of understanding that's, that's growing uh, in, in our physical health. So we have this mind and body and we're you know, we're, we're putting a lot of energy into understanding these aspects of ourself. Spirituality has always kind of been an aside. It's been thrown to the side, left for religions, perhaps in our modern age, left to new age. There's been sort of no clear methodology for that exploration. You know, it, it, it's just been kind of left there. And I think that the, one of the biggest things, in fact, I would say I'm very much in line with the Hermetica that godlessness is the biggest problem of the world. You know, some people would say it's, you know, we need to remove God from the world, you know, get, just get more pragmatic, practical, and just sort of omit spirit. And I'm like, no, actually, you need to bring a lot more spirit into the world. And we in this modern age need clarity. We, you know, you've identified the the mystery school as a university of the soul. And 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 I would say that's there's a lot of truth to that. Because we do need an education on spirituality that is, in my humble opinion, uh, outside the normative thinking of religion, which has become very dogmatic. See, a cool thing about lineage is that, sorry, I'm getting excited. <laughs> a cool thing about lineage is that it, it's growing and it's alive. It's expansive. It's never, you know, as much as it's ancient, it continues to progress or it too would be dead. And I don't see that in religion. I see religions as trying to fortify their position of we are perfect exactly like this. We've been always been perfect in our understanding. We're perfect today. And yet the lineage says it is perfect through growth. It is not perfect as it was. It is perfect as it grows. So, you know, it's, it's, spirituality should be a progressive state for the individual and for everything that supports that individual. And I see lineage especially being important for that progressive state. If you don't have, to make it real simple, if you don't have experts who can help you to ask yourself the right questions about the things you're trying to figure out about yourself, you're not going to get anywhere. And as much as I have deep respect for psychologists and psychiatrists and other people who work on it from a, a mental point of view, there is a, another aspect that is purely spiritual, that is about the why of life. And, and so much is about who are you and why are you here? What place should you be in? What is your place in the universe? And yeah, there, there is an expertise to working with someone on that. But should you figure out who you are to know thyself? It is the most satisfying, fulfilling, clarifying thing that will ever happen in your life. And I would argue that it supersedes any other education on the planet. To know thyself is the most important thing someone can do. And why we would believe that we would do that purely through our own understandings and just sort of stumble in the dark with a flashlight and hope that we figure it all out. Why would we not believe that there are people in the world who are experts at this exploration? And that's, that's in a very pragmatic sort of mental way. That is what this is about. We need, we need a, 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 a school for the soul, a school for the spirit. And this is very much what the mystery school fits into. Mm -hmm. I would wholeheartedly agree with you that to know thyself is, is ultimately the, the most 
meaningful and uh you know, when, when I, there's a certain point that I reached in my life where I felt like, okay, I know myself mostly and, or really well, and I'm, I'm really finally clear on purpose and I'm aligned with it and I'm living it. And, um, you know, I'm on track with my unique piece versus, you know, the, that kind of questioning process of where do I fit into it all and who am I, what am I? When I finally felt like, oh, I'm in it, it, it there was just such a, a sense of um, peace, you know, inner peace. And, um, you know, really knowing like, yeah, I'm on track and it's so fulfilling and there's just so much joy and flow and ease. Not that everything is easy, but just like you, you're just aligned and it makes everything so much more um, in that that flow. So. I would 100% agree with you that it is the most important thing that we could be pursuing in, in our lives is to, to come to know ourselves. And you mentioned experts uh, and have people who have expertise in this journey and also different, you know, metaphysical arts and, and sciences. And that's one of the other things that, that you and I have talked about and that uh, I also really love and appreciate is that within um, like the modern mystery school, it's not just about one teacher. It's not one master or a guru or, you know, what they say. We have a whole team of experts and leaders within uh, and teachers within the mystery school that offer diverse perspectives, different approaches, different expertise. And, and there's a power in working together as a team uh, that it has been such a privilege to be a part of, to, to come together with other leaders who are very unique in their own expression and yet all so committed to a bigger mission and serving and fulfilling that mission together um, in a united way. You know, it's, it's, it's so beautiful. And, and you've been very instrumental in um, the, the leading and kind of helping build that team, uh, you and, and then founder Goodney. You know, there's been such a, a vision that it's required to, to pull all of that together I was just wondering if you could maybe share some of your insights on that, on the power of the team and why it needs to be a team, not just, you know, one master teacher or a guru, for example. Yeah, it's, um, it, it's something that uh, it kind of fascinates me because so many spiritual organizations, they, they want the one person who is the person that does it all. And that's so not how we do things. And I find that, uh, one of our greatest strengths is a team because our spiritual aspects of life and all the things in it, there's so many different expertises that we can study. We, we could look at sacred geometry, alchemy, Kabbalah. I mean, there's, there's shamanic magic, hermetics, esoterics. There's so many ways to work with our spirituality. And the thing I love the most is that no one's expected to know all of it all the time. There's just no way to do that. And so for you, for example, you're, you're an al alchemy teacher along with uh, my wife, Davina Franca. You guys are the fronts of alchemy in the mystery school. Well, that means I don't have to be an alchemy expert because I have people I trust and I know who are well-studied and, and super good at their job. And so when someone says, well, I wanna know more about alchemy, I can say, please talk to one of our experts on alchemy. I'm not your alchemy teacher. You know, I'll teach you hermetics and be your ritual master teacher. And for those of you who know anything about teams, this is the most beautiful thing in life. It gives us so much strength. If I were to relate it to, because I have a lot of athleticism in my background, if I relate it to a team, I don't have to be the best player on the team. I just have to be the best at my position. And then everyone else can be the best at their position. And you end up with a great team. And we firmly believe we're here to build Shambhala. And you know what's Shambhala? To make it real simple, we're here to build a better world, a world that is more balanced between the light and the dark. To do that means teamwork. It will not be built by one person. And it will not be built by only one person's thoughts and feelings on a matter. We built by everyone in respect of each other's expertise. And the beauty, as, as you were saying earlier about the fact that it never, the study never ends, that's, that's so true. But I love the fact that I can 
you know, even after 20 years, I can decide that I want to become an alchemy master and begin that journey today. I didn't have to start it 20 years ago. I could have started it now. I could start it five years from now. The exploration never ends. And so there's always more to be had. And that, as you say, the well never, it never empties. If you, if you run to the end of some piece of knowledge, it is of human when that happens. If you say we have, we have come to the conclusion of all there is to know on this subject, then it's not of the light or God because there is no, there's no conclusion. Let's take a pause from this fascinating conversation to enjoy a quick consciousness break. From the center of being now, I am God. I am God. I am God. You are an eternal being. You have never been born and therefore you can never die. This body is not you. This physical body is finite. You are infinite. From the beginning the plan was to be here for only a short time. This plan has not changed. Step away from your reality. Step away from your reality. Become an observer of yourself. Step back into your true self and observe that movie where you are the main star. Allow yourself to be happy. Allow yourself to be happy. Allow yourself to be happy. I am God. I am God. So I, I have a question for you. So uh, as a scientist, what, what were the connective pieces for you, particularly with alchemy and science? Like what really brought those two? Because one could be seen as almost a very metaphysical way of dealing with science, a spiritual way. Uh, and then the other one is very pragmatic. And, and so what, what brought those two pieces together for you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was interesting. I thank you for the question. Um, I, <laughs> you know, having been educated formally in physics, we hear, you know, we, we learn a bit of the history of physics uh, and, and science as we go through education. And the programming uh, was, well, yeah, it started with alchemy, but they didn't really know what they were doing. They were just kind of pseudoscientists, you know, and and trying to turn lead into gold. And we all know that that's not possible. You know, so the mentality that I had originally about alchemy was that, you know, and, and I remember I had, uh, I had a, a woman one time I'd gone for, you know, just in my spiritual exploration, I'd gone for a reading with this, this tarot reader and she picked up on, um, you need to study alchemy. And I, <laughs> I said to her, 
I don't have anything to learn from those alchemists. I'm a real scientist. <laughs> and she's like, no, 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 honey, you, you just trust me. You, you don't understand. You need to study alchemy. And I just kept kind of batting it away. And, um, and then uh, not that long after, maybe, I don't know, maybe a couple months after, uh, my, my mom, you know, was in a bookstore and she ended up getting like a really strong hit that she needed to get this book that was on the clearance table and that she needed to give it to me. And when she gave it to me very apologetically, she's like, I know you didn't want any more books, but I couldn't walk away without giving this to you. <laughs> um, it was a book on alchemy. And so here the universe has kept showing it to me again and again. And I thought, okay, well, I'm going to take the signs from the universe and read about it. And as soon as I started to read about alchemy, I realized it wasn't what we were taught in school. It was actually the goal of alchemy was the wisdom of it and that it was a universal formula for transformation and how to improve, you know, from a, a, a natural state to a more perfected state and how we go through that. And there's a formula, there's a method to it, there's a science to it as well as art. And then I realized science came from this well of wisdom that alchemy is. This was the original science, yet at that time, when it was alchemy, they didn't divorce it from spirituality. Science and spirituality were, you know, metaphysics and physics were interconnected, um, and like siblings, you know, and that they needed to work together. And, um, and, and by that point, I had already come to this realization personally that I wanted to serve in helping bridge science and spirituality. So I saw alchemy Ultimately, once I opened my mind to actually exploring what it was, I saw that this was the key to bridging them again, because it was once what they were originally united. And alchemy was also so applied and so practical and experimental, not just theoretical. Um, like it is the way in which, you know, we discovered things like phosphorescence, that we discovered uh, herbal and, and, you know, various pharmaceutical remedies, you know, we discovered these through the tradition of alchemy and, and so much of our modern medicine, modern science, chemistry, physics, uh, even psychology is based on this ancient tradition of alchemy. So it really ties everything together and reunites the, the science, the art and the, the, the consciousness, the spiritual side of it all. Yeah. Oh yeah. And you're awesome at it. Uh, I know you've helped lots and lots of people, including myself, to understand a great many things. But I, I find it interesting, too, because when we tie what you just said into the perspective of seeking to know thyself, there's an aspect that comes in here that I think people overlook, and that is that it is our seeking of the truth to understand what is so. It's the discernment of knowing what is true and what is not true, what is so and what is not so. And all of our pursuits are about that. And you, in your scientific endeavors, along with uh, alchemy being an aspect, is trying to find the truth of the matter. Because there's that sort of Judeo-Christian tenet of the truth shall set you free. And so we see within ourselves that to know thyself is very much alchemical. Uh -huh. Irrefutably, it's an alchemical process. But it's distilling all the other stuff away that allows us to find out who we really are. And in learning who we are, we begin to understand the truth of who we are. And in that, we, in essence, set ourselves free. Uh, so, you know, it, when talking about alchemy, uh, it, the other thing that it really introduced to me, I first learned about hermetic teachings through alchemy. So for me, originally, you know, the, the, the teachings of Hermes Trismegistus as one of the fathers of alchemy. And of course, there's the Emerald Tablet, but then there was a much broader, uh, what they call the corpus hermeticum or the hermetic, you know, the body of hermetic teachings, uh, the Kybalion and, and all of these different teachings. And I loved them as a scientist. I loved the Kybalion in particular, the seven hermetic principles, uh, in addition to alchemy and how it was very practical and applied and tested. Uh, but then we got it, you know, as you get into the hermetic teachings, like the hermetica and the Asclepius chapters, it's like, it's so deep in terms of the, you know, the teachings that we hear that the divine is within us, and that their human beings are a great wonder. And uh, there's so much to explore there. Now, you are a master of hermetics. And but what I love about how you bring it 
uh, forward is that it's so much about our, our life and how to really live life in a state of greater mastery. It's not just these esoteric concepts about how the universe works. It's, it's really grounded and applied in life. So what is it that you like love so much about hermetics and how is it that you have found um, your process has been to really ground it in to, you know, how we, how we live it? Yeah. Uh, the thing that really attracted me to the hermetic side of things more than anything else is that as much as I would argue certain understandings of hermetics, that was sort of always proven to be wrong. The hermetics was correct. And my assumptions or my belief systems were were wrong compared to the hermetics. So instead of battling them, I started leaning on them more. And I found that, hey, you know, if you follow these hermetics and the principles that come with them, all of a sudden, you seem to have answers to many things. And confusion sort of disappears and you're able to navigate waters that most people get lost in. Because hermetics means that it is untampered by a human ego. It is correct. It has always been correct and it will always be correct. And there's nothing that a human being can do to hermetics to, uh, without changing it into something that isn't hermetics, to uh, be more right with. So for example, uh, one, one of our hermetic understandings, you cannot share what you do not have. That is ingrained in everything in the universe. If it is not available, it is unshareable. So that gives you one piece of wisdom where you walk around in life and you maybe you watch a politician on TV tell you what they're going to do with something or someone in your life says, oh, I'm going to do this and this and this. And, and the first thought you have is, do you have the thing that you purport to be able to do or share with others? And so there's, there's many examples of that inside of hermetics that I find just allow you to clarify your thoughts. And I found in my my own life that I'm able to uh, move through situations so much more easily. And that doesn't mean that there isn't a struggle, but the answer is always sitting in the hermetic understanding. It's sitting right there. Here's, here's the answer to that problem. Here's the, uh, the understanding or the direction uh, you need to go because it, it's, it's always available. And it cuts through sort of all the 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 din of the world and the 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 misunderstandings of the world i mean hermetics to me is the foundations of how people should live their life and if everyone studied hermetics regardless of what they pursued as a joy repairing motorcycles to being the president of the united states it doesn't matter hermetics is going to make your life clear and easier to live and so for me it's 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 kind of everything it, it, it's life. I, I've kind of described hermetics in the past as understanding the mind of God without the influence of human. And and the beauty of it is, is that it applies to everybody. You you nobody gets to escape hermetics. Nobody. It 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 doesn't matter what your religious belief is, who you are, your sexual orientation, what you think you are. It it just doesn't matter. The wisdom in hermetics. Uh, permeates the human consciousness, the human life. Uh, and and it's so powerful. And when we talk about magic, for me, all magic has to flow from a hermetic understanding first. Because hermetics, to me, is the reality that people seek. And they're, they're seeking a, a, to define, define reality, say it's hermetics. And everything else other than hermetics is an illusion. And that's where we get... Mm -hmm live in an illusionary state because you're living outside of hermetics. It's cool. It excites me. <laughs> yeah. I love how you put that. You know, like I think um, if I look back at my own understanding of, of hermetics as I came into the mystery school and, and I think what a lot of people, you know, who, who, who believe they're studying hermetics, um, you know, often what we read in the books is that hermetic teachings were from Hermes Trismegistus. Uh, but, Actually, uh, Hermetics, is, Hermes took his name from the Hermetic teachings. And as you say, Hermetics means it's untampered with, it, or in other words, it's pure. You know, in science, when something's hermetically sealed, it means not, no impurities, no pollutants from the outside get in. So it remains pure and in, in a certain state of, of integrity, it's sealed. Um, 
And so what I've learned through the mystery school and, and especially, you know, as you've been bringing through some of these hermetic teachings, not so much from this kind of high esoteric perspective, but from this really grounded, applied and practical perspective is how much these are the universal keys to life and how to live life in that highest uh, alignment with our true self. And, you know, some people might, for example, hear what some of those keys are. Okay, we need to be discerning. Uh, we need to have commitment, right? We, you, you talk about some of these keys, you know, a few of them in your book. Um, but then they might think, well, yeah, okay, I know that. But that to know it and to think, oh, well, that's obvious or, or I already knew that, to, and then almost dismiss it because they think they know it. To know it and to live it are two very different things. And what I, what I so appreciate with, with as you dig into it deeper, rather than just kind of taking it at face value and saying, oh, yeah, well, that's obvious. You dig into it and, you know, you really drill it down and show how it applies in so many different ways and how you really can't um, get around it, so to speak, uh, that it will trump. It is universal all the time. So you've really mastered uh, how to take these universal principles and apply them to life. Um, and can you share maybe some of your insights as a teacher, uh, working with students as they struggle, you know, between that knowing it to living it? Ah, uh, yeah. I guess one of the things that helps to make all of these pieces work, and it's it's only one part of it, but is is integrity. So a person has to come in to to study hermetics or any part of the lineage and they have to approach it from a place of integrity uh if you compromise your integrity in learning something like hermetics you automatically fail see it's true of everyone in life but it's very true if you're going to study hermetics it's even more more so integrity allows us the ability to learn and to change and if we don't have integrity we have no platform on which to grow from and which and which there is to change from so our integrity really matters in other words when i say i want to be in alignment with light some people would say a higher self a higher perspective i want to be more enlightened then you have to be operating from the integrity of doing that and you can make mistakes and that's fine and not have done it right but if you come from integrity you can maintain the place that you've moved to in the higher perspective you don't fall back it's not just a teaching it becomes something that you integrate into yourself because integrity allows integration into the self um so in so much of what we do i see that people seek sort of um, a solution that comes from outside the self that they want the magic to change them from something that you do to them some outside thing and we almost do nothing, if you want to put it that way. I do nothing for you except have you look at yourself and realize that you're God and you have all the power to change it all. But once you come to those certain realizations, then you have to operate from the integrity of making that change happen. And one of the easiest ways hermetically, you know, Gandhi kind of paraphrased it, but there's people that said it before him too, be the change you want to see in the world. That is true. So I would say, okay, if the world is too big a concept, be the change you want to see in your personal life. And if you're, and, and one of the biggest uh, struggles we have in life is when we know what we are doing is out of integrity, potentially harmful to the self. And we realize that we, we see it, we acknowledge it. This is not a good way to live. This is not a good way to operate. You know, maybe I overeat and I'm, 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 un, it's an unhealthy thing. And yet, I can't stop. And that's a big struggle for people. This, this gap between, I know what I believe to understand is right. And yet, and I want to do that. And yet I can't, I have an addiction. I have and an addiction can be to emotions. You know, I, 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 I'm addicted to the feeling of depression or apathy or whatever it is. And so operating from integrity says, if I genuinely want to do something, I will do it with uh, the intent to complete it, to succeed at it, to do that thing and to make it happen. And if you do that, there's no way the path would ever fail you. It's impossible, you know, because the path will always be underneath your feet. 
as long as you operate from integrity. And I, if you were to say to me, you know, what are one of the things to make the world a better place? That would be one place. There's others, but that would be one place I'd start is always operate in integrity. Be honest, be forthright, say, I don't know, say, I do know, say, I think I know, but I'm not sure. And if we always spoke that way and came from that place inside our heart and our mind, we could actually grow because we could be redirected, we could be corrected, and where we could affirm clearly that we do know something because we come from integrity. So I jokingly say, you know this, T, I jokingly say, Ipsismus Dave is always right. And the reason I can say that is because I'm always willing to be wrong. I'm always willing to be redirected and corrected. And so in that, I can say I'm always right because I'm always willing to be wrong. And that comes from being in a field of integrity. I'm happy to be wrong. I, I, it, it would allow me to grow. And so it, in, our, in our growth in life, integrity is just like an essential to learning about really anything, but hermetics, you know, it's really important. Join us again as we continue to dive deeper into this enlightening conversation with Obsessimus Dave Lanyon on the next episode of Quantum Minds TV. This Conscious Conversation was created, produced, and recorded by Dr. Teresa bullard White in collaboration with Dave Lanyon and edited by Verse Content and HH Films and Photo. The theme music was created by Tim Mountain of Evenload Productions. Quantum Minds TV is a product of the Quantum Learning Academy. 